This is the Beretta 92, and if you've owned one of these or handled one of these, then you're probably familiar with this guy. This is the guide rod, and nowadays they're made out of plastic. They used to be made out of metal, and Beretta still sells metal guide rods that you can buy separately and install, but I figured since I have this nice lathe that's sitting right behind me, I'd go ahead and make one, as it's not a very complex part and can be done entirely on the lathe. I think this makes an excellent beginner lathe only project, and I am by every definition of the word a beginner. So uh, don't think of this video as a how-to, more so a video about how I made this part for my dad's 92 compact. So I'll get to the video. So the first thing I did was go ahead and measure the original plastic guide rod using my favorite measuring tool, the Starrett Master Vernier Calipers. Uh, these things are just beautifully made and beautifully accurate. But as I'm going around and measuring this plastic guide rod, I realize I could have just used any old cheapo caliper as it's a couple thousandths out around here and there. And it's, it is just a cheap plastic part spit out of an injection molding machine. And as I look at it, it was actually slightly uh, curved a little bit from top to bottom. But any chance I get to use these beautiful Vernier calipers, I'm going to take it. Here you can see me taking an inside measurement of this tiny hole in the slide. This is where the guide rod clears the slide and is one of two critical dimensions here on this part. This is kind of my maximum diameter I can have on the main body of the guide rod. Also in the top left you can see a one-third scale model of an M1 Garand. A company called Goat Guns sent me that a couple months ago and they didn't obligate me to include this in a video. I just honestly forgot to include it in the video. This is a perfect opportunity and I thought it was cool they sent me that so I'll leave a link to their website down below. Well with everything measured the first thing I do when I get to the lathe is go ahead and reset all my tool holders on center just using the tailstock center method. The day before I actually made a spacer to raise the height of this tool post. This is the smallest Aloris type quick change tool post holder and um, it was simply too small for my lathe. It's designed more for a 10 inch and below lathe and this is a 15 inch lathe. So all of my tool holders were actually like topped out at the top of the dovetail. So I made a spacer, but now I gotta reset all my tool heights. The piece of steel I chose for this project was this one inch round of 12L14 left over from another project, and uh, I think it's just what I need. And here I'm just using the original part to make sure I have enough sticking out of the chuck. I also need to make sure I have enough space for the parting blade between the chuck and the tool holder. I also need to make sure there's enough material on the end of the guide rod so that I have enough space to face off the hole left by the center drill. Next thing is to spin it up and face off the part as is tradition. I'm just taking very light passes here as there's quite a bit of stick out on this part. Then I'm going to come in with the center drill and drill a center hole. And then I'm going to come in with the live center and use that for some tail support. So now with tail support I go ahead and swap out to a left hand turning tool. I also engage the gear train which allows me to power feed which is great because I'm going to be removing about three quarters of an inch of material from most of this part. Now it's just a simple manner of hogging out material until I get close to my final dimensions. At one point I come in with the parting and grooving tool because I ran out of space near the tailstock center with my regular left hand turning tool. At the moment, I'm actually kind of liking starting with a really oversized piece of stock because uh, it gives me a lot of opportunity to play around with speeds and feeds and just learn the machine and learn what it likes, learn what it doesn't like, as well as it's just exciting for me to watch the machine make chips and uh, fill the room with cutting smoke and stuff like that, so it's pretty cool. Now I'm getting pretty close to dimension and I'm not terribly satisfied with the surface finish at this point. The tool I use typically for turning like that is a very sharp tool, it doesn't have very much of a nose radius, so it always leaves a really poor finish. I think also my power feed is a little bit too fast to leave a nice finish. So I also come in here with a grooving tool and just use it to kind of smooth over the finish. So here you can see the grooving tool with its flat face smoothing off the spiral left by the sharp face turning tool and I think it does a pretty good job with a little bit of roll. And here I'm coming in with a Scotch-Brite pad to clean up the surface after that last pass. 
but like an idiot, I leave the power feed clutch engaged and power feed right into the chuck jaws, but luckily I caught it in time and didn't cause any damage to anything, just a small ding left on the tool holder. That's fine. Now that I'm happy with the diameter of the main body of the guide rod, I'm going to go ahead and make that flange using the grooving tool that I already have set up. And I'm just going to come in from the outside diameter and just feed all the way down to my final diameter. And of course, I overshoot the dimension by a lot, so I go ahead and use the grooving tool to just completely bring the diameter down to the same diameter as the main body of the guide rod. And then I actually go and switch to my parting blade because I'm going to part it off here anyways and I can use the parting blade to achieve the exact same um, effect as the grooving tool. The thickness of this part isn't really that critical. It just has to be um, slightly thinner than the seat that it sits in on the locking block. The most critical dimension here is actually just going to be the overall length from where that flange sits in the locking block to where the guide rod extends out of the slide. Here you can see me come in multiple times with the parting tool and that's just to make sure that I'm not taking one big one inch parting operation if I don't have to. I'm just reducing the overall diameter so that when I do eventually go to part this piece off it's a little easier and I'm only going through about half an inch or so. And finally once I'm happy I'm going to go in and part off the guide rod. So whenever you part off a piece, it usually leaves this little nub on the end, and uh, really the quickest way is to take it off with a file. So I've gone ahead and chucked it up here end for end in three jaw with a piece of aluminum can to protect the machine surface. Here I've once again flipped the part end for end, and I'm just leaving the tip sticking out. If you remember, I left the part extra long to give me space to face off or turn down the portion with the center hole. That's what I'm doing here. Well, I initially thought I would face it down all the way, but that was taking too long, so I just came in with the parting blade and parted it off. And then I come in with the file and clean up that surface there. I'm also using the file to break the edge here. Remember, this is the part of the guide rod that is actually visible from the exterior of the firearm, so I'm trying to make this look nice. Well, after doing that, I kind of looked at it, and I wasn't super happy with it just being flat. So I actually decided to match the taper, that rounded edge of the original guide rod. I just kind of held the plastic guide rod up to the compound and swiveled it around and copied that angle and uh, put on a little slight taper onto the end of the guide rod. And I'll touch it up with a file as well and break the edges and it'll look quite nice. After breaking the edge with a file and chamfering it a little bit, I come in with Scotch-Brite and I wasn't happy with that so I actually came in with successive grits of sandpaper and finished it. I think it looks pretty nice. And here's the finished part next to the original part. And uh, after a test fit, I determined that the guide rod was sticking out about a 32nd of an inch, so I actually went back and repeated those last two steps of turning that taper on the end and uh, finishing off the end there with Scotch-Brite and sandpaper. I also needed to deburr the large end of the guide rod. I forgot to do that when I parted it off and when I took that nubbin off, and that was actually causing issues with it not seating all the way when I put the slide on the pistol. But after doing those two things, the guide rod runs perfectly. It's perfectly flush with the slide when the gun is assembled, and I think it looks quite nice. Definitely looks a lot better, in my opinion, compared to the plastic guide rod. So, thank you for watching. Uh, this is a totally different video than some of my previous videos, but hopefully you guys like this format. I've also just using this as sort of an experiment to kind of test out the angles and setting up the camera around the lathe, making sure my lighting's good, that sort of thing, you know, pushing the boundary of, of my uh, video making skills here, I guess. So if you like this video, please let me know if you liked it. If you have any suggestions or uh, comments, go ahead and leave them down in the comment section below. If you didn't like it, you probably haven't watched all the way to this point, so... Thank you guys for watching and make sure to subscribe. I keep forgetting to say that.